How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about how much PewDiePie's 12 favorite things cost. I don't think I need an introduction for PewDiePie, but my audience might not be the same demographic that watches his channel. He has 111 million subscribers, probably around 40 to 70 million dollars of net worth. And when I scrolled through his channel, I saw this one particular video. Sometimes you just want to know what really rich people buy and what do they enjoy. This video is brought to you by Moomoo, the commission-free trading app. Get one free share of stock just for opening up an account. Deposit $100, you can get 10 free share of total stocks. Deposit $1,000, you can get a total of 20 free shares of stocks. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. Let me just say that everybody has their own taste. It's your money, you can do whatever that you want with it. But for Felix's spending, I think it's more interesting because he has so much money, he can basically buy whatever that he wants, and yet he chooses those particular things. A word on don't buy, you don't need it. Many people have been misusing this term. I use it personally to further my financial standing when you don't have unlimited income in the beginning and when you're not financially independent. It applies to most of the population. That's why it sort of works for most people. But if you can buy that thing, and your total net worth is still going up significantly, you are saving a lot still, well, why not? The first item that he showed is a tape measure. It's called a BMI Met 2. And I found it on Amazon for about $28. It looks pretty good to me and it even says accuracy class 2 according to EU standards. I bought like three of these, a small, medium, large one for like 10 bucks. So this is probably worth like $3. And then I have for high accuracy measurement, just a little ruler. Before you actually try it, don't knock it, right? Maybe if I actually buy it and use it, I'll think it's the greatest thing ever since sliced bread. Personally, I've been trying a lot of products and reviewing them on my DIY channel. And over the course of reviewing lots of products, I noticed that sometimes I come across something that I really like. Now, what does this say about someone that who's doing a no spending month? When you do no spending, you rob yourself of discovering something that entertains you and also delights you. So if you do go over to that channel, listen to keywords like, I really, really enjoy this, or this is one of my favorites. The more products that I go through, the more experience I would have with that class of products and the better recommendation that I can give you. The next one, I don't know if he was trying to hide the brand name. In a screen capture, you can see the last few letters, U-C-C-I. These are new shoes actually, that actually looks old. This is something I just don't understand. I guess maybe in his position, he's famous enough already. He doesn't really need to wear anything to show off that he's rich. He wants to tone down all the brand names. So there is a version that has Gucci, the brand name plastered all over it. And you know how much this shoe costs, $850. When you have all the money in the world, you try to buy the highest quality, but you don't want to show off too much with the brand names. There is this adjustable dumbbell that he showed. It's called the Innovase Pro adjustable dumbbell. No price on it. It was sold on overstock.com. I was able to find something similar called the Power Block Elite USA 90 pounds. The heavier it is, the more expensive it is. So you get a pair of these for a low, low price of $733. So it's not cheap. Personally, after I saw this, I guess I can put on like 15 more pounds or so. So I was looking up some of these dumbbells myself and I was thinking, you know, I don't really enjoy this particular kind of dumbbell because it's square for one. Two, there's these bars next to where you grab it. And I feel like if you grab it a certain way, those bars could interfere and bump into your wrist. So I was looking for a different kind where it's a traditional looking dumbbell where it's not obstructed all the way around. And I found these Nordic track dumbbells. They look like they'll do the job. Even if you have more money, you can't buy something that is significantly better. That's the best that it gets. It's what the world offers you. It's what industrialization offers you at the time. Right now, you're basically living like medieval kings or way better than that in terms of quality of life. He also has a Swiss champ, a 33 function pocket knife. $72 is not too bad. You know the one that I have? Leatherman Micro. I like this one because I use the scissors the most. I actually don't enjoy the Victorinox brand because they have a little tweezer thing and also a toothpick thing that you got to pull out on the side. And also there's like a plastic cover on the top and bottom. It's just, just a style that I don't personally like, I guess. Some people like Mac, some people like Windows. 
You can like a Leatherman instead or a Victorian Knox. He also owns a Grand Seiko 62 GS and it appears that this is the only watch that he owns. He says he's sort of like a minimalist, so he has very few items. It looks like a nice watch. Personally, I don't like wearing watches. A long time ago, I used to wear a Movado watch. It's a very nice one. I think at the time it was worth like four or $500 in college, but I was riding a bike with my Movado watch and due to the vibration, it just fell off. Because I work with my hands so much on DIY projects, I just don't like wearing watches anymore. It just interferes. The thing I'm surprised about is he's not buying a more expensive watch. He can obviously afford it. He stated that he owned a Submariner, a Rolex. The cool takeaway I hear from all this is that he has enough money to try a lot of expensive things and yet, he went and settled for something that is particularly his style. It may not cost the most. That's probably not the end goal here to buy everything the most expensive. He showed owning a Gary Basement vinyl figure, which is a number 94 out of 100. It's not sold anymore. I went on eBay and found a 12 inch vinyl thing for $375. Since it's not sold anymore, it might be priceless. But if I were to guess the value of it, it might be like $800 or so since it looks like about 16 inches tall. I will see you the vinyl figure and I'll raise you this T-Rex over here, which is not sold in any stores as well. I guess, you know, sometimes you like some exclusivity. Then he went over three books that he owns, Son of Steel, The Iliad, and or The Odyssey. I don't know if this is just one book or two books that he showed, but he showed very old looking books. It looks like first print editions, and those books can actually get up pretty insanely high in value. I've seen as high as $100,000 for one single book, but I think if you're gonna handle it, it's not gonna be a $100,000 book. I would guess a couple thousand to $10,000 for those editions. In one of the books that he flipped open, you can see a few titles. It looks like an anthology of a lot of good works. Cowper's Complete Works, Adam Smith's Theory of Moral Sentiments, Miss Bremer's Works, History of the House of Austria. I can honestly say I haven't read any of them, but I do feel that those short essays is probably very, very good life lessons to read. I have something similar that a subscriber sent me. I actually think this is a super duper good book. It's getting the most out of life and anthology from the Reader's Digest. There's all these, you know, it's only like two or three pages for each essay. And each one of them has a very, very good life lesson built into it. One of them being about traveling it gets boring when you are just an observer, a tourist, and you're just consuming stuff. But it makes it so much more interesting that let's say you do your work along with it. You are a photographer. You go have a meetup with other photographers in the area. You go to a destination to do some of your work. That makes things, you know, so many times more interesting. I have to say from my own experience that is very true. He also showed off this little fidget toy thing. It's a butterfly knife. I've actually been in the market for one of them and I saw this Vornex practice butter knife. It's made out of metal and I'm like, okay, you know, I've been putting it off buying it because I don't really need it. I just, you know, just more fidget toys, right? I got plenty of them. These fidget thingies, this one is my favorite still because you can kind of flip it around. There's a limited range of what you can do. The only thing you can do is flip it. I don't think there's any kind of trick things that I can do to this anymore. But for the butterfly knife, or there's another name for it called the Bali Song, and Squid Industry makes this particular one that he owns. I assume it's expensive because it's weighted properly or they designed it very well that it can flip and twist and turn very easily. It's made for trick flipping. Hope you guys enjoyed all these products that he owns and how much they cost. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.